So the theme of this sequence is coming home to the body and we're already doing this with yin because we're moving into this more being state and out of the busy doing um, but we're going to build upon that um, with just this um, sense of awareness as an observer being able to become familiar with the felt sense in the body. Often our mind is in charge and kind of constantly scanning and being very vigilant um, and sending these signals to the body and we can often get stuck into these um, chronic states of stress within the body um, and what we're going to do is work from the bottom up so we're going to create a sense of safety in the body um, practicing this felt sense using um, both yin and weaving in a few other mo modalities to create this sense of safety in the body and that will start to send signals to the brain that all is well, all is safe, um, the nervous system is able to respond accordingly and we move more into this parasympathetic nervous system state. We're soothing the nervous system and hoping to kind of come back into some sense of balance with the nervous system so that where there is threat we're able to respond and um, you know it has its positive aspect but equally without that being overplayed, being able to move back into this neutral or move back into rest. And um, so we're going to be practicing that as we go through our sequence with this attitude of being the observer um, and just having the awareness of being able to listen. So the body's got all of this intelligence. We're often stuck within what the mind is telling us, but being able to create space to tune into what the body is saying. Um, so we'll, I'll weave that in as we go through the practice. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy and yeah, let me know how you get on. And welcome to the practice. So given that you're setting this time aside for yourself, this sacred time, just taking a little moment to make the space feel special and nurturing so I'm lighting a candle here, you might want to do the same or maybe set in the scene with some music. So there is a playlist that goes along with this practice that will be linked below, um, a, Spotify, a Spotify playlist. So just making it a really sensory experience. And we're going to start with a short centering practice. So just finding a place where you feel comfortable. Maybe that's seated or kneeling or lying down. But wherever you are, just feeling like you have some connection to the ground. So if you're sitting, making sure you can connect the sitting bones to the ground and find a little bit of length in the spine. And doing the same if you're lying down. So we're starting to take our attention from the external, moving internally. So just connecting firstly to the breath, just noticing the natural rhythm and pathway of your inhale. Maybe noticing the cool air as it enters the body, noticing where it travels within the body and just softening and relaxing on the exhale. Maybe even recognizing the warm air as it leaves the body. We're not trying to change anything here, we're just noticing and observing. And then you might want to do the same with the physical body. Taking a quick scan from the tips of the toes all the way to the top of the head. Just noticing how the body feels, again, not trying to change anything, we're just Establishing our baseline, knowing where we're starting from. And then we'll do the same with the 
feelings or emotions. Again, just noticing. You can ask yourself, how do I feel right now? And really tune in to whatever comes up there. Maybe whispering the name of that feeling internally. Maybe noticing the sensation of that feeling in the body. Where do you feel that sensation? And what does it feel like? Again, just trying to have awareness of these feelings and sensations as they are. They're always changing like the weather. But these are often the language of the body. So we're just having the courage to listen here. Just noticing who is observing these sensations and thoughts. And you might want to say internally, I am not my thoughts. I am the thinker of my thoughts. So we start on our practice with this attitude of being the observer, which is something that we're going to continue as we move through the shapes and poses. Just taking a full deep breath here. And just when you're ready, beginning to open the eyes. So we're going to start with a couple of exercises um, with the upper body, starting with the eyes. So if you want to readjust your sitting position. So we're going to interlock the fingers and bring them behind the head. So you're cradling the back of the head, the occiput. And this is mainly so that we're not moving the head because this is an exercise purely for the eyes. So with the fingers interlocked behind the head, I'm going to try and keep the body as static as possible and just move the eyes as far left as you can. And we're aiming to hold the eyes in this position, stretching the muscles around the eyes for up to a minute. Obviously come out if you need to. But what we're waiting for here is some parasympathetic response. So you may sigh, or yawn, or swallow, or even begin to um, drool a little bit. So we're moving into that rest and digest state. So just hold in as long as you can until you get that response. And the more often you do this exercise, the quicker that that parasympathetic response comes. So if you haven't already, starting to bring the eyes back to the centre and just noticing, again, we're aware of the sensations in the body in yin. So just noticing how that small movement had an effect on your body. And then we'll do the same on the other side. So once again, cradling the back of the head, this time moving the eyes to the right holding for up to a minute, looking for that response. So they say our eyes are our, the window to our soul. So they talk of our eyes lighting up or losing their sparkle. If you think about in a point of threat, your eyes are scanning or you might have the look of love. And this is because the eyes are linked to the autonomic nervous system. 
via the vagus nerve, which we'll mention again. So bringing your eyes back to the center. And again, just paying attention to what's going on inside, how your body feels. And with that awareness staying inward, we'll move into our next little exercise. These are all quite subtle movements. So moving the left ear toward the left shoulder, just letting the weight of the head carry the ear over to create this space in the right side of the neck. So I've got my hand on my head here, left hand on my head, just to add a little bit of weight, but there's no pulling or tugging here. Just letting gravity do the work of unwinding these really tight muscles in the neck and carry a lot of tension here. And again, we're looking for that relaxation response, so keeping your attention inward. Releasing the hand, coming back to the centre, before moving across to the other side now, right ear to right shoulder. Trying to keep the left shoulder down, just noticing the difference between the two sides. So with these two exercises we're starting with, they're both quite subtle movements, but we are trying to engage the vagus nerve which is one of our body's most complex cranial nerves, often called the wandering nerve, because it links with all essential organs. And we'll mention it again as we continue our practice. So bringing the head back to the center. And you might be ready to stretch out the legs. You can do that. But just, again, noticing how you feel. So taking these moments to be still. Take our attention inward before we move on, rush on to the next thing. But we're going to start to get set up for our first pose, which is caterpillar. So it's a forward fold. So we're using as many props as possible because we're wanting the muscles to be passive. With this pose, we're trying to target the backs of the legs, the hamstrings, and the gentle stress of the ligaments along the spine. But just being aware of any issues with the back, the lower back or sciatica, you want it to keep the back as straight as possible, so using as many props as possible. I've got a blanket under my sitting bones here to make sure that the pelvis is tilting forward. You can use a bolster to stack up. I had, as I had there. <laughs> if you want to bend a little further, you can. I'm folding a cushion here just at the top of my thighs, between my thighs and my stomach. But with yin, we're wanting to allow the muscles to be passive, supporting the body with props. Slowly moving in to find your edge. So you want to feel supported because we're going to be here for five minutes in total. But once we're in the pose, we're trying to find this stillness. So your attention is fully on the physical sensations in the body. And practicing that observer that we began with. So as well as this stretch along the backs of the legs and the spine, we've got this compression in the stomach, massaging the organs here. So we're stimulating digestion, that rest and digest state. And the vagus nerve, which I mentioned, passes through the belly, the diaphragm, the lungs, the throat, the inner ear and facial muscles. So any practices that stimulate or relax these areas of the body can influence the tone, we call it, of the vagus nerve. 
through this mind body feedback um, loop that we have and what we're trying to do is send these bottom up signals from the body to the nervous system that all is well so you may want to repeat that internally all is well So we're in our final minute of this pose. So just trying to soften a little more, ensuring that you're breathing as deeply as possible, even though we have this compression, breathing into the back of the lungs. And as we start to move out, in a few seconds, trying to do that with full awareness of what your body feels like, your attention inward, and moving really slowly. So you're noticing each little micro movement as you move out the caterpillar shape. So just starting to move now out of the pose really slowly, using the hands to support the back. So you're pressing into the hands, and gently then you'll begin to walk the hands as you unfold from this caterpillar shape. So we're moving into the fourth part of each pose, which is the rebound. So just moving any props out of the way and we're going to come and lie on our back. So you're lying in Shavasana, allowing your body to be in this neutral And in rebound, we're just allowing the body to come back to neutral, but again, we're practicing being the observer, noticing how you feel in both body and mind. So taking a big breath in here and sighing the exhale out. Drawing the knees into the chest, we're going to start to move into our next pose, which is going to be butterfly. So we're going to come back up to seated when you're ready. So in butterfly, we have the feet together. So it can be as close to the hips or as far away as feels comfortable for you. They'll stretch different areas. So the further away, stretching more the hamstrings, the closer we'll target more the spine. So again, being mindful of the lower back, particularly any issues like sciatica, your hips are going to want to be raised. But generally just making sure that the hips are, sorry, the pelvis is tilting forward. So having a block underneath the hips I'm showing you here some blocks underneath the knees as well if you feel any tension there. You want to feel supported. And you can either have your um, back rounded with the head supported as I have here or you can even put your elbows on a support like a bolster and then rest your head in your hands just so that the neck can feel comfortable. So again, we're targeting ligaments along the back of the spine. This time, of course, we've got the stretch in the inner thighs. So that's where we're targeting. We're gonna be here again for five minutes. So trying to feel 
like the muscles are as passive as possible. Allowing the muscles to relax, just noticing where you're gripping and holding on, seeing if you can soften. And the breath's usually a good indicator of that. So if you can breathe a little bit deeper, just softening on each exhale. these yin poses we're wanting to find that edge without any pinching or tugging and then this stillness so you're just using this still time just to be with whatever is whatever arises for you So we've got another pose here where we've got this compression in the stomach. You might have heard the stomach referred to as our second brain. That's because these nerve fibers in the stomach connect back up to the brain via the vagus nerve. So again, this nerve is a keystone of that um, mind body connection. So think about having a knot in your stomach or your gut instinct. There's this two-way communication. So in this final minute in this pose, you can maybe just tune in to what is trying to be communicated. What is your body's wisdom speaking to you? Taking one full deep breath here before beginning to slowly move out of butterfly. Again, using the hands to support the back as you become upright, slowly unfolding. So we'll move the props out of the way and come again to rest on our backs in Shavasana. Moving back into these neutral shapes. Just so that you've got this moment to notice how the body feels after butterfly. Taking a deep breath in, sigh in the exhale. You can bring the knees into the chest for a little gentle rock of the back before we move on to our next pose, which is going to be cat pulling tail. <laughs> so we're going to come start lying on our left side. So we've got the left leg straight out underneath and bringing the right in front of the body if it feels comfortable at a right angle and then your bottom leg so your left leg in this case 
is bending back towards the bottom and if it's comfortable you can reach for your foot but we're not pulling the foot here that it's not a yang pose it's yin so you want to feel like your muscles are as relaxed as they can be so if your hand reaches the foot that's fine if not you can just bend the leg And if this is too much, you can be on your back in a reclined twist. So just lying on your back with your knees rolled to one side. If you want to deepen it, you can look back towards that back foot. But we're trying to be really passive. So I've got block under my the knee of my top leg. I've got my neck supported with blankets and cushions. So the target here is this a gentle compression for the lower back, an opening of the quads, the front of the thighs. But we've also got this gentle twist as well. So we're stimulating the stomach and the spleen. It's a pose that stimulates the entire body. But we're specifically massaging the stomach and abdominal areas with the gentle twist and it's a nice release for the diaphragm. So you can begin to soften with each exhale. We're going to be doing each side for three minutes. So in this final minute on this side, just seeing if you can just soften the muscles that little bit more, trying to be in this passive, receptive state. Noticing any areas you're still holding tension and tightness and just having the intention to let go. starting to unwind from the cat pulling its tail and on this side just releasing any blocks trying to keep the attention inwards we're going to roll onto our tummies moving props out of the way we're making our way into our rebound here we're in crocodile so just resting the head on the hands letting the body be really passive and keeping your attention inward. We're using this opportunity to breathe deeply, maybe noticing the belly touching the floor as you inhale and just everything soften as you exhale with a sigh. And we'll start to move on to the other side. Seeing if as you move into cat pulling its tail on the other side that you can just notice each little movement as you move in, trying to keep your attention fully inward, not rushing into the shape, but really listening to the body. Noticing where you may need the same props or different props this time. So we're looking for that stretch in the legs, gentle compression on the spine with this twist. 
again here on this side for three minutes. Trying to find that stillness once you're in the pose. I can even say internally and give myself permission to be still. I give myself permission to rest. So we're in the final minute on this side, just seeing if you can once again just soften a little more, using each exhale to soften. So gently we'll begin to move out of Cat Polinic's tail, just releasing the leg, moving any props out the way as we move, once again rolling onto our tummies, back into Crocodile. Just noticing any sensations. How does your body feel? So again, using your inhale, noticing the belly touching the floor on the inhale the back of the ribs expanding and just sighing the exhale before moving the hips back into child's pose giving a nice release for the back just as a short counter pose before we move on you can even sway the hips side to side if that feels good for your body so slowly coming out of child's pose we're going to move into saddle pose which is kneeling I'm demonstrating from the front here that it starts in a kneeling pose and then you've got this internal rotation of the thighs so it's a real deep stretch on the knees it can feel a lot for some people so you can do instead of full saddle move into half saddle which I'm showing from the front here with one knee bent, one straight, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to do half the pose on each side. But it's quite a lot on the knees. You want to make sure you've got loads of props, which can be under that back foot, which can be supporting the knee of that straight leg. So you can stay here or you can start to recline. As I'm showing here, I've got a bolster behind. I'm starting to recline back onto the bolster which obviously deepens the pose but if it's there's any discomfort for the the knees or the back then there are alternatives so you can do this half saddle if that's too much again you can be on your front like we were in crocodile and just pressing into the forearms 
Because what we're trying to do here is to have this slight compression in the back, but we're stretching through the front of the thighs and the hip flexors here. Again, stimulating the stomach, the spleen and the kidney meridians here. So this stomach meridian, our sea of nourishment as it's called. So it does both this, the job of both digesting food and this energetic job of extracting energy. And when we're in that overly sympathetic response, that stress state, it affects this stomach line. So we're trying to rebalance that meridian in this pose. We're trying to find stillness. So trying to relax the muscles. And breathe as deeply as you can into that space that we're creating in the front of the body. So taking one full deep breath here before you begin to, bit by bit, come out of this half saddle if you're doing half saddle in each side, maybe pausing at each point as you lift the head, then the upper body, and then releasing the leg. Just noticing how the body feels before we move on to the other side if you're doing half saddle. Obviously staying still if you're doing full saddle. So start to move on to the other side having that internal rotation to bring the foot behind. And then if you're moving into this reclined shape, just making sure you feel supported, that the back feels supported. Noticing any difference, you may need slightly different props on this side. We're here for two and a half minutes on this side also. Remembering that we're trying to find in yin the edge for you without any pinching or tugging and then stillness. Muscles passive. Coming back to that stomach meridian this sea of nourishment, you might want to say inwardly here, I am nourished, or I release what no longer nourishes me. Taking a full deep breath here before we slowly begin to move out of saddle. So it's doing it bit by bit. Coming onto forearms, the elbows to begin, and then onto the hands. Trying to keep your attention on observing the body, unwinding the legs. And just noticing. 
taking a full breath in and sighing the exhale. I'll just do a gentle forward fold here, maybe windscreen wiper the legs just as a release for the back. So we're going to stay in this setup for our next pose, which is going to be a reclined butterfly. So we're butterfly set up we had before with the feet together again propping under the knees with blocks if you want that support or books or cushions so we're going to have this stretch on the inner thighs and the groin but this time reclining back so I'm using a bolster here but you could use sofa cushions stacking those up So stretching the groin and the inner thighs, but we've got this spinal extension this time, a heart opener. So you can deepen that by taking the arms up and overhead if that feels comfortable. Or just resting them by the side, whatever feels good for you. So we're going to be here for five minutes. And with this heart opening pose, we're creating this release and this space for the diaphragm, the respiratory diaphragm. So you can bring your attention there if you want and just notice as you're breathing in this space that you've got to inhale deeply. And just lengthening the exhales, you soften into this reclined butterfly. Trying to find that stillness. These passive muscles. So our diaphragm tends to be a place where we can store or hold a lot of unconscious emotion and tension it can be known as the belt of fear here but we can work with it to release it so we're doing that as we breathe in this pose but you might also want to say inwardly it's safe to let go it's safe to release. So the final minute in this pose, just seeing if you can just let go a little bit more. Again, coming back to that mantra, it's safe to release. Seeing if you can soften the muscles, breathe a little bit deeper, just noticing the space created. So begin to move out of the pose, 
just slowly again, but using the hands to bring the knees back into the centre. Then gently pressing into the forearms and the hands to bring yourself to seated. Just going to notice how we feel in our rebound again. So just moving your props out of the way and coming to rest on your back. Observing how you feel in body and mind. And taking a big breath in here. And sighing the exhale. So we're going to come back up to seated and just gently make your way up. Maybe rocking up or just moving at your pace. We're going to move into deer pose. So we've got, as you can see here, our legs at a right angle. So the front leg for a full stretch is at a right angle, but you can bring that front foot as close to the groin as feels comfortable. So the further away, the deeper the pose is. And as you can see, I've got some a blanket under that back knee just for a little bit, of, just to make it a bit more comfortable. So you can stay there or you can deepen by coming into this fold. So I'm resting on a bolster here. And then you've got a little bit of a twist, if it's okay with the neck, looking the other way. So with that right leg in front, I'm looking to the right. So it's a deep stretch for the hips and again with a twist we're stimulating the digestion and we're going to be on this side for three minutes. So just trying to do the same again, let the body be as passive as possible. muscles let go, finding that stillness. So we'll start to make our way out of deer on this side, pressing into the hands. Again, trying to 
make each movement quite slow rather than rushing out of the pose, just coming out bit by bit. We'll move any props out of the way just for a little counter pose before we move on to the other side. So just come in onto your belly, resting in crocodile. Coming back into this neutral shape. slowly moving up you can rest a moment in child's pose it can be a nice release for the back maybe a little gentle hip sway before we move on to the other side in our deer pose so you're looking to bring the legs to a right angle that front leg at a right angle to the body Again, just adjusting that front foot as close to the groin or as far away as is comfortable. So we'll be moving into deer for three minutes again. So just making sure your body feels supported so you can be still. Any props under the hips or the foot. And if you're moving into that fold, positioning your props so you can feel supported with the twist here as well. So a reminder that we're targeting this rotation in the hips as well as this stimulation of the stomach, the digestion with the twist. Just noticing if your body's slightly different on each side. Trying to find that stillness. So once you're in the pose and find that stillness, we're coming back to practicing that role as the observer. There is nothing more important to the true growth than realizing that you are not the voice of the mind. You are the one who hears it. And that's from the untethered soul. And that's what makes it a practice. We're practicing hearing, we're practicing observing. And we can do that as we stay here in stillness. So slowly coming out of this deer fold, coming out bit by bit, resting on the forearms and then moving onto the hands, just really slowly being gentle with your body as you move out of this fold and twist, 
feel nice now to release the legs, unwinding them, moving all your props and bits and pieces out of the way so that you can come to rest on your belly once again in crocodile. Just letting the body be really heavy. Taking a deep breath in here. Sighing the exhale. And you want, may want to send your hips back into child pose, a little bit of a hip sway, just to release any tension in the back and hips. Before we move on to our next pose, which is gonna be Sphinx. So it'll be on our tummies. So we're targeting the sacral lumbar arch here, so this compression in the, in the back, gentle compression in the back, everything else being quite passive. So you can rest on forearms in sphinx here, like this. To deepen the pose, you can actually press into the hands, into seal. But we trying to create this compression in the small of the back. So you can use props. I've got the bolster underneath, um, kind of underneath the ribs here, resting there. So you can have the head bowed forward. You can even rest the head back if that's good for your neck. You can rest your hands, uh, your head in your hands, sorry. So you rest on elbows. So once again, we've got, as well as the compression in the, in the back, we've got this stretch in the front of the body, this space, maybe a release again for the diaphragm, allowing you to breathe deeper into the belly, but just once again, trying to let everything be as passive as possible, particularly in the lower part of the body. So we're going to be here for four minutes in total. You may want to come back to that reminder, all is well. All is well. So our final minute in this pose. Seeing if you can come back to just noticing how the body feels rather than getting caught up in the mind and the thoughts, bringing your awareness back to the felt sense in the body. And it is a practice, so just coming back to noticing and observing. can take a full deep breath with this space that's created and just soften that a little bit more on the exhale.
just going to really slowly be mindful of the back moving out of our sphinx pose. So just slowly lowering down. If you are using any props, just giving them a nudge, moving them out of the way. So we're just going to rest in our rebound in crocodile once again. So taking a full deep breath in here and sighing the exhale out before sending your hips back into child's pose as a short counter pose. And we're going to move into our final pose, which is actually going to be child's pose. We're going to be staying in this for three minutes, so you want to be set up so you can find that stillness in child's pose. So we're going to have, if it's comfortable with you, the knees together and the hands by the feet. So you can rest your head on blocks or cushions to bring the ground up. Or if you're comfortable, just putting the head, resting the head on the floor. Again, what can be really nice is with the knees wider, coming to rest on a bolster so you can feel really, really supported. So we're just ending with this gentle stretch of the spine and a gentle compression of the stomach and the chest. But also child's pose with this more fetal shape has this sense of feeling curling up to feel safe and protected so just noticing how that feels So we'll slowly move out of our child's pose. 
moving into the last rebound back into crocodile so resting on your stomach the head on the hands so we've finished our practice we're going to move now into rest final five minutes of our practice get cozy put on any layers socks or blankets anything that will help you feel cozy for the next few minutes and just as with all the other poses you want to make sure that your body feels like it can rest here so it can be quite nice to have something behind the knees a cushion or another blanket or bolster as I have here and the weight of the blanket can be quite restful as well so we're coming back to that place of stillness letting the whole body be heavy now letting the bones be heavy and melting towards the floor they sink and feel supported just taking a scan from the toes just noticing any last remaining tension in the lower legs in the thighs in the hips just letting the whole spine feel supported letting the shoulders roll towards the floor and just releasing any last tension in the jaw across the forehead and the top of the head the whole body is still and relaxed
So starting to bring some gentle movement back into the body now. You may want to move fingers and toes. And just taking a full deep breath, breathing into the belly, starting to wake the body up now. And just slowly opening the eyes. Just keeping the eyes closed for now, but in your own time, making your way back to seated. Trying to keep the eyes closed just for a moment longer. We'll close our practice. Before we do, I just wanted to say thank you so much for practicing yin with me. I hope you've enjoyed this time to be still and experienced its magic. I'd love to know how you got on with it. But for now, we'll bring the hands to the heart. We'll just give the hands a gentle rub, creating a bit of heat between the palms. And once you've got a bit of heat there, just rest in that. The palms over the closed eyes, letting the light back in gently and lowering the hands. Namaste. Thank you for practicing with me.